Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video of the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series, Gina Tell of Thread Graffiti is going to show you how you can free motion quilt on your home sewing machine. Hi, my name is Gina Tell and I'm a long arm quilter. You can find me at threadgraffiti.com. And because I'm a long arm quilter, I love free motion quilting. And I learned on a home machine just like this one. And so today I'm going to go through some of the steps, some of the techniques, some of the fun things that you need to know to free motion quilt at your house. Okay, so our quilt is already basted and it's ready to go. And we used 505 spray and a couple of pins, so it's ready. And then today we are going to do um, the meander. And meander is the very first thing that I did when I first started learning to free motion quilt. And so that's what we're gonna do today. But we'll talk about some other fun stuff in a little while. So this is a downloadable PDF that's in the bottom in the descriptions and you can print this out and what I really strongly suggest on all of the downloads is to practice this. Print it out, put a piece of paper over the top of it, get yourself a pen and follow it. And what that does is it, it helps you with what's called mu muscle memory. And your muscles in your arms begin to remember things and it becomes more easy for you. So when I first started learning free motion quilting, um, I had someone that taught me some things about just doodling. And she says, doodle every day. Doodle when you're having coffee, doodle in the afternoons, doodle whenever you can get a minute because it's really good for your muscle memory and it kind of just keeps you excited. And so I strongly suggest that you do a lot of doodling. And this is actually what it's going to look like when we stitch it out. This is a different color thread. We're not gonna use this color thread, but this is basically what we're gonna do today. We're also gonna use the Supreme slider. It's a really great tool because you can put it on top of your extension table. You do not have to have an extension table for free motion. It's helpful, but you don't have to have one. And this just goes on the top and it sort of makes a, a, a platform that's easier to move things around. It's easier on your arms and it just sort of moves things more freely. So that's a great tool. Uh, not necessary, but it's a great tool. Okay, so we are ready to get our sewing machine set up for free motion quilting. And when you do free motion quilting, basically what that means is the feed dogs, that's these little teeth that are down on the bottom, they are going to be lowered. And when the feed dogs are up, that's what helps move things back and forth. They kind of chomp. And when we're doing free motion, we don't want those to help us. We want to be able to do that ourselves. So we're going to lower the feed dogs. We're going to add a darning foot, which is also a free motion foot. Okay, so we're going to use a free motion foot or a darning foot. Um, and basically what that is, this little, this little post is going to sit on top of this post and it's going to move up and down. We are going to just fingers tighten this screw. Once we get the screw all the way in, we're just going to use our screwdriver and get it good and tight. We want to make sure it's nice and tight. And this one has an open foot here so you can see some of them are closed, a circle all the way that's closed. It doesn't really matter, they both do the same thing. If you have one that has a full circle, that's okay. This is, they're open just so you can see a little bit better. So you wanna keep your, your thread through there like that. I also wanna mention these Magic Bobbin Genies. These are available there in the downloads. I've used these for a long time. They go down in the bottom of your bobbin casing and they're great for free motion because it helps with um, some movement, if there's any kind of just sort of seals up any loose area in your bobbin and makes your tension look better for free motion. So those are great. So when you're doing free motion quilting, you wanna make sure that your feed dogs down here, this little jiggity jaggedy things, they are in the down position. And the button to do that on this particular machine is down here. You just wanna flip it and they'll, they'll lower all your machine. It may be on the front, you might have to look at your manual, just make sure you put your feed dogs down. Okay, so I strongly suggest when you're doing any kind of free motion quilting that you do some practicing beforehand. Checking your tension, just making sure that you feel good, you're in the good mood, got you know some music on or whatever, just make sure this is something that should be a ton of fun and you just need to enjoy yourself. Don't go too fast, you just wanna have fun with it. So I have a piece of sample, a quilt sandwich in here and I'm just going to kind of stitch around and just kind of make sure that we are good with the tension in that.
I like to use the machine guard gloves because it gives you a little more control when you're moving the, the fabric around. And I also cut the thumb and the first finger off. I keep them like this so that I can re-thread or sometimes it's good so you can be able to feel um, feel the, the uh, stitch on the bottom, make sure that you've got some, so that's, I always cut those two off. pretty good. I usually keep my needle in the needle down position so that when you stop the needle stays in. That way you can pivot and move and that sort of thing. So we're gonna raise the needle up, cut the thread, and we can look at it, flip it over and make sure that it looks okay. And it does. And so I think we're ready to go. Okay, so, so when you're doing free motion quilting it is great to have the Supreme slider. It's not necessary but I am gonna use it today. And it is basically just a very slippery little piece. It has some adhesive, just very temporary adhesive. I don't know if adhesive is necessarily the right word, but it will stick. You want to just line up your circle over where the needle goes through. And it just allows, this is kind of a slippery surface and it's going to allow some movement. Okay, so when I do free motion quilting, I almost always base the four sides of the quilt. Um, that way you've got all of, everything's not going to move around, all your four sides aren't going to be moving around. That way you can start in the middle and you can kind of move around. We're going to go as close to the edge as we can. We're going to use a stitch length that's large, a 5.0 is what I just used. And I've put the walking foot on so that I can do that basting stitch all the way around. So we have got everything basted, we have our feed dogs down, we have our darning foot or free motion foot on, and we are ready to go. So we're going to just do the meander and that's a great design to start off first. If you've never done any kind of free motion quilting, remember that there's a lot of quilt here. Don't get frustrated if it feels heavy. I have an ironing board over here on my left to kind of keep some of the bulk and you just want to go slow and have fun. And one of the reasons why I really love free motion quilting is because there are no real rules. It doesn't have to be, you have to start here and end there. You don't have to do any of those things. You can start wherever you want to. Sometimes people say start in the middle and work your way out. If you want to do that, you certainly may. I'm going to start right here on this side and I'm going to work this corner and then I'm going to work the other corner and I'm just going to work my corners. If you do a really good job making sure when you baste it that everything's real flat, you shouldn't have any problems with puckering. And that's one of the reasons why they say to start in the middle and work your way out just for puckering. But if you do a real good job basting, you should be fine. And just like with the straight line quilting, we want to kind of roll it up and get to where you want to start. Okay, we're going to start just outside of our quilt line here in the base, in the batting area. We're going to push our needle down, press our foot down, and we're just going to go. Meander, we're just making loops. Okay, so meander basically just means that you're just meandering around very calmly. And since meanders don't necessarily have a stopping and a starting point, if you do need to stop and adjust, or when you do need to stop and adjust, it's good to stop when you're at a seam. That way you won't see the start and the stop as much. It's important when you're doing the meander to try to get your arms in a very even motion so that your tension does not look larger in some areas and smaller in some areas. It all is just part of practice, but just try to be aware that you're not pushing in some areas and then you know going slower. You wanna to try to get to a consistent speed.
Okay, I need to adjust, so I'm gonna stop where there's a seam. And you wanna just try to, when you've stopped, you know, to kind of, if, try not to go to the left or to the right, you know, try to continue on with the line that you started on. And then as you go, you'll wanna take your pins out. right outside and then you can go back over here to this side and start again and go down and meet yourself or you can start this way if you're left-handed and go back that way I'm right-handed so I usually try to start on the left and work my way to the right okay so I am ready to just do another section and I'm just gonna start right here right next to where I just was and I'm gonna go down and over and as you're doing this sometimes there's a well not sometimes but there is some bulk and you can throw it kind of over your shoulder um, and do it that way just for a little while because it does help this part not pull when it's down in front of you it does tend to pull a little bit so it is it is easier sometimes to throw it over your shoulder okay if it is not perfect if there are some areas where you can see your stops and your starts that's okay just keep practicing we're gonna go unroll just a little you do it the better you'll get practice makes perfect and just remember not to be too hard on yourself and have some fun with it okay so I'm just gonna keep going meandering over here and I'll see you in a little while okay so we finished our meandering doing free motion quilting and the reason why I picked this to show is because meander is really the first thing that I learned and it's a really it's a great gateway a design because meander just basically means there's no real rules you can kind of do whatever makes you feel good you can make them closer together farther apart there's really no right or wrong so make sure you're not hard on yourself with that I just went through and and just kind of moved freely and and that's how we've created this and so then what we will do is uh, we will trim it and Kimberly is going to show you in some future videos how to add your binding and how to trim it off. Once you're finished with that, you'll trim it off and then you'll be ready for binding. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some additional designs that we can do if you are if you've practiced the meander and you feel good about that. There's some other beginner type designs that the Fat Quarter Shop created based on some of the first few designs that I did. So I'm going to go over those. Okay, so the designs that are created are down in the description box. And the first one is the meander that we just did. And this is just kind of to show you just the sample that I made. And then there's also a stipple. It's basically just like a meander in a much smaller version. So a lot of times people will use that as a filler inside a block or in the background of a block. And so there's real no, really no right or wrong with that either. It's just kind of a, a little tiny meander. And so it looks good as a filler. And so these were created so you can kind of just start with a pen and put a piece of paper over it 
and, and go over it. And that, that kind of helps you with your muscle memory. Any kind of doodle will really help you with your muscle memory, even when you were learning how to do cursive when you were younger. Those types of things, it's great to just continue to do the loops of cursive and not pull up your pen and just practice looping them together and connecting those designs, and that will be helpful. So there's a couple of other designs. The next one that's one of my favorite is the modern. It's kind of a meander, only it is a square. And so this one, you're just going to kind of start and you're going to just follow it. And this might be a little bit easier for some people because there is a definite place that you can stop and kind of readjust your shoulders and your arms. And so you're just going to be following it. There's also no right or wrong. You can kind of just go crazy and follow it. And those are a real fun way to, um, I a lot of times use these in more masculine quilts. So that's a great design. Okay, we also created a spiral one. The spiral one is um, along the same lines. There's really no right or wrong. We just kind of start. This one you're going to start and you're just going to follow it as many times as feels comfortable and then just make a straight line and then start again and then make a straight line and then start again. And when you do a whole bunch of them, it doesn't matter if there's some little spots that kind of look, look a little funny. You can just kind of keep going, but you just want to keep going and then and that is a really good thing to practice for your muscle memory and it also looks really fun when there's a whole bunch of different sizes and shapes on the whole quilt so that's a fun one I'm also going to show you a circle motif the circle motif is really good because you can just kind of go and you can make one loop and I've got a couple of samples this one has just one loop and this one has two loops but they're a little bit bigger but it's the same technique you're just kind of starting and you're looping and then if you want to do an additional one you're just going to do that there and you don't even have to do one or the other you can mix them up so those are great you can just kind of start and go around I've done these on the long arm on projects I've done these um, on my home machine it's just a really great and these also have a spot where you can kind of stop and adjust your arms a little bit and so those are fun these are all downloadable designs that are on the bottom there are lots of additional tools that the Fat Quarter Shop carries. They're not necessary for you to use, but they're great to try. You might really like them. Urban Elements makes these, they're, they're basically the same as the designs I just showed you a moment ago, but they're longer. And so this is an example of what it looks like if you open the package. And what you do is you're just going to take it and you're going to attach it to your quilt. You can use some of the spray, the 505 spray that we used in the basting video and you can just put just a little bit of spray under it and smooth it out and then this paper you can just sew right over and then once you're finished you pull it off and so it's a great way for you to practice your muscle memory as well as getting a really great line that way you can follow it this is similar to how the long arm works you do a row at a time and so that's going to look really consistent and nice if you're looking for something like that and they come in all there's several different designs that are available. Okay, I just want to show you another example of the same Ultimate Beginner quilt. We used a different colorway on this one. And I just also wanted to show you that um, once you've become comfortable with your free motion quilting, you can add all of the elements that you learn. And this one is, is called graffiti quilting. That's, um, that I love it. This is my very favorite thing to quilt. And this is all freehand and it's it's basically taking the components that you're learning and I've created some samples just to kind of show you and and what it is is it's just combining all of these all of these designs that you learn flowers and swirls and hearts and other swirls and you can do swirls in so many different ways and and this is just a combination of all those different types of designs and there's really no right or wrong with this. You just kind of start in a corner and you go. There's some circles and there's some flowers with circles inside them. And there's some other flowers, big size and small size. And I don't want you to look at this and feel intimidated by it because this is fun. The, the reason why I'm showing it to you is because you can start with some of the beginner designs and work your way up and practice. There's a lot of doodling involved and there's a lot of practice. I'm just showing this to you so that you can see that we can add all of the different designs together to make one cohesive design as you grow and become more comfortable with free motion quilting. Okay, and I just want to take just a second to show you the back. It's always fun to see the back when it's a solid, if it's a solid color. 
The meander looks really pretty when it's washed. It holds up really great if you want to use it on a quilt that you're going to use a lot and wash a lot. And it just looks really pretty. And thank you for joining me. In the next video, Kimberly's going to show you how to bind the quilt, so make sure that you check that out.